You're more than welcome. I was very touched by by what you're doing and, and how engaged you are. I, and I think it's very important um, because if it's not uh, talked about and pointed at, then people will not realize uh, that things are changing. Uh, then all of a sudden we take it for granted without sort of appreciating and without then also making sure that it becomes irreversible. Uh, that the next generation for them, that it is a, a natural thing, of course, why shouldn't I? Uh, but for the generation before me, it was never a natural thing. Uh, there's been so much uh, to do. So no, I, I really like what you do, which is of course why I'm here. So thank you very much for having me. Have you listened to the first episode yet? It's about her vision of feminine leadership and what it feels like to be considered wrong before you open your mouth in a meeting. I have a couple of very short questions for you. Feel free to mm -hmm. answer with one, two, three words. What's the dream job that you would create for yourself now if you weren't a politician? Oh, I would like to be, I, I have actually three things that I would want to be. I would like to be the hostess of a dance restaurant where you eat first and then you dance because I always found it very annoying if you have to change location uh, and the second thing is that I literally want to be a bridge builder. That was actually my original plan. I wanted to be a bridge building engineer. Um, but then they decided on the Great Belt Bridge in Denmark and then said, oh, it will be the last one. I was completely wrong. They've built more bridges since then. Um, because I think that in what I would want to do would be to create uh, space for humans to have fun and space for humans to connect. Genius. If you were starting your career now as a policymaker, what is the policymaking skill or life skill that you would invest into building? Um, I think I would, if I, was now to tell my younger self something, it would be not to worry so much and not to think that everything should be done in a hurry. Because for instance, now, you know, I realize that good legislation, basically 80% is something that you do already and only 20% are new to give it direction because then you can actually implement it. It can become real. If you want to do things 100% new, you know, very few people or, or people working in, in systems can cope with it. So you need to take things step by step. And I think that robustness and, and patience is very important uh, in order to, to achieve uh, your goals, because this is the only way to get people on board. Yeah. Is there a strength that you have that can turn out being a weakness? or a weakness that you would like to work on to improve your leadership? Oh, I think that is one, I, one of the most, you know, common games uh, in, in job interviews uh, when people say, oh, I have this weakness and then it turns out to be a strength. Um, I, I really have a problem on, in being on time. And in, in my Danish culture, you're supposed to be on time. But the thing is, you know, the reason why I, I do not correct that is that I try to comfort myself by saying, but I get a lot of things done. Of course. So, uh, no, I find that to be a real weakness, always to be just a bit late. <laughs> do you have one miracle morning practice that sets you up for a great day? Getting out. No matter the weather, no matter where you are, just get out uh jogging or just walking if you're in a new city well and maybe not that courageous and not having that much time just around the neighborhood just to get a sense of where you are and what is the weather like yeah 
you've mentioned it's important to have people who you can bounce off ideas from. Uh, I've also heard you say that one of your role models was Madeleine Albright and Nelson Mandela. Who would be your role models out of the now practicing executives and top politicians, for, for example, that you use as your role models or inspiration or mentors? Well, I, I don't... Uh... I don't really have, you know, one person also because I think very often it's too much to ask uh, because no one is perfect. So it's, it's more, I think, well, oh, I really like what um, Kristalina Georgieva is doing in, in the World Bank. Uh, I really appreciate um, how uh, Christine Lagarde is becoming uh, the chief of the ECB. Uh, I find inspiration here and, and there um, because I think that is more uh, closer to the truth that you can find inspiration and, and inputs and, and impulses with many different people rather than clinging it all to one who will eventually, as we all do, disappoint one way or another. It's great to hear you mentioning women. We are now living a golden era of women leading the European Commission. If you were the president of the European Commission, is there one value or principle of the corporate culture that you would like to work on reinforcing or changing in order to improve the corporate culture of the institution? Well, what we have started now on diversity, I think that is very important, uh, but it cannot only be diversity in terms of men and women, must also be uh, different uh, backgrounds. It comes natural when it's nationality, but all kinds of different backgrounds that we recruit uh, wider. And the second thing would be language. You know, we would have a dependent source of income if you had to put down a euro every time you used an abbreviation. <laughs> the European Union as the only exception, because if we could open the language, so that it was easier to understand, I think more people would share our passion for the European part of our democracies. This is one of your magical skills that you can communicate very complicated policy areas and legislation in a very human way. How would you broaden it out to all policies that the commission is doing? How should we transform the way we communicate about Europe in order to win the trust of the people that you mentioned? Well, we, we very often think that it's about us. You know, no matter how I have fought it, um, my speaking points always start, today the commission, so because the news is that we have taken a decision, so we are there, we, it's about us. And I think if, if we would make it more about um, teachers who need better connections in order to, to teach their children, their, their pupils remotely, or more about the fishermen who are worried about their quotas, or more about people living in cities worrying about uh, air pollution. Um, I think that, that is the most important driver. And, but I think it's, it's very human, and I think it happens for everyone. It, happens for, it happened for me when I was in in the national democracy, it happens in every municipality, uh, that you tend to think that you do something instead of what is it that you do. This is about the what, and now my question is about the who and how. Do you feel there's a space uh, for our communication to involve, include more information about the who are the people behind the scenes? Uh, a little bit along the lines of what lies in Europe and what I'm trying to do here is committed to do to show the people who are actually the souls behind the institution. Do you feel there's an important function or, or value in doing this or an administration, a political system per se is supposed to be communicating primarily the value of what we're doing and what is the concrete deliverable for the people? Well, I think it's, it's so unfair uh, when people say about uh, other people working in the European uh, institution, they are faceless bureaucrats. You know, that's, that's a good example of the critics who just want to use you, us, 
for their own purpose because it's really a mean thing to say um because you know everything uh everything we do uh when actually you do the follow-up to make sure that uh, a, a member state will do something to have cleaner air. Every time farmers feel that they can safely transfer into organic farming, everything you do something, that is a monument uh, to the people working here. You know, there are no statues of sort of the generic uh, staffer in one of the institutions. But that monument is in every time a piece of legislation is put into real life. Uh, and I think if you think about it that way, then you also realize that there is a connection between you and me as people and the people who uh, benefit or sometimes feel the pain of legislation being put into real life. And, and that is very important because institutions are uh, the building blocks, but they will only remain solid and trustworthy and long lasting when the people have the passion to fill it. And, and this is why people are so, so important uh, and what we do and the choices that we take. Yeah. Do you have one vision that you always had for yourself of what you wanted to create or a thing that you want to be remembered for when you retire? By the way, check out also the previous episode where we discussed whether women can have it all and balancing out motherhood and executive careers. Well, I have always tried to fight this idea, uh, what would I be remembered for? Because I think if you are remembered, it's because of something you did not because you wanted to be remembered, but because this is what you really wanted to do, that this was your passion, that this was, this to some, in some way helped truth for, for the people that you work with, then maybe, maybe someone will remember you, but things that you do to be remembered, there is a risk that they are false, that, that they're not for real. And, and the only thing that I can remember from my earliest days uh, back in primary school was that I wanted to work with other people so that we could agree on what to do to improve our situation. When I say Slovakia, what's the person or an experience that comes to your mind? Oh, a lot of friendship. Um, because I have, you know, great colleagues here and, um, and I, I just really appreciate that also because I come from a, a, a country where the knowledge about, uh, the Eastern part of Europe is not the strongest. And that is just not, that is so unfair because each, each, each European country has the same character and differences, uh, as any West Europe country so um, you know we have these now COVID came in between but starting to travel more outside of capitals uh, and this is still some of the things I really look forward to do uh, to meet more people because my guess is that it's the same in your country as in mine that people outside of the capital they're different uh, <laughs> from the people living in the capitals yes and the last thing, tell us just what's your message in terms of shining more light on Europe. Uh, this is what we came here to do, to show people the humanity and the leadership and the highs and lows of who are the people who are trying to bring Europe forward. So uh, a free stage for you now. Click on the link in the description below to find out how did she unleash that leadership that she's admired for today. Well, that is always a tricky point uh, because there are so many things to do. But I think in these days, uh, the most important thing is to show people that just as well as we can fight the COVID-19 virus, we can fight climate change because that is as giant, is an even bigger thing to do uh, because it's also about life on this planet.
and it shows in everything that we do if we're really on target to make it happen. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I really enjoyed this interview. Hope there will be more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wish you a no, great was... start of the, this year, a rentre uh, to work and uh, fingers crossed with everything that's ahead of us for this season. Yeah, likewise. likewise. And thank you very much for doing this. I hope that your podcast will travel very, very far. Thank you. It will. Also, thanks to your help. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> thank Take you. care. Take care. Oh my God, that vulnerability and authenticity that she brings to this space. I couldn't have wished for a better guest to open season two of Lights in Europe in our podcast series. So drop your likes and comments underneath this episode. Share it with everybody around you who you feel cares for the future of uh, transformation leadership in Europe. And don't forget to click on the subscribe button on my Lucia Collections of a YouTube channel so that you are notified about every single episode that's coming up because there's great stuff held up for you. Thank you for your support and see you next time.